Hey guys, it's Jeremy here. I'm gonna be showing you how to use the character styles and character tool within Illustrator CC. It's gonna be very helpful and working with type in Illustrator is so important and it's really fun and easy to do. So we're gonna to go to window in the top left corner, left click that, and we wanna go down to the drop down menu called type there. And what we wanna do is select the first one, which is character. The shortcut key for that is control T. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be command. So click that and you can see you'll get this window pop up called character. So you can see here you've got a lot of options here. It looks scary, but it's not. If you click the top right corner, you can see you get these four lines and you can see that you can turn hide options. So if I click that, you'll have less options. But what you wanna do is select it and click show options. And that's really gonna help you out. So you wanna click that and it's gonna give all these extra options which we need. So first up, to be able to use this tool, what we have to do is create some types. So first up, we wanna press the letter T Make sure you click on your artboard and press T, then left click once. And sweet, we're gonna get a word up. So you can see here we've just got some placeholder text, but we wanna change that. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. And just call it typography. So you can see there we've got a word there and the font I'm using is BW Midgar for now, but we'll play around with that. So the first option we have is the touch type tool. So if I left click on the touch type tool, we get a lot of options. What it allows us to do is to single out or focus on one letter at a time. So if I left click on this P letter here, you'll see there's a box pops up. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And what we can do now is that all these options in these boxes or parameters is only gonna affect that one letter. It's not gonna affect the whole word or the whole um, line. It's only gonna affect this one letter. So you can see here, this top bit, I can rotate the letter like that. And you can see it's sort of having an effect on the spacing there. Um, I can scale it up like this, bigger, smaller. I can move it, baseline shift it up. I can move it around like this if I wanna do something crazy. So you can see it's pretty cool. And if I wanna select another letter and do it there, I can just left click on whatever letter I want and start playing around with that one. So you can see you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of freedom, and it's it's auto, it's gonna help you transform the way you design and with your typography. And if you're doing layouts, um, if you work with like magazines and brochures and things, then it's really gonna help you out. So that's the touch type tool. I'm just gonna control V that, just like that. And I'm gonna click off there to get, to get out of that option. So once you've done that, you wanna left click off the box on the touch type tool. And you can see you just press V and select off and it'll turn it off. So we've got our word here, and now what we can do is to change fonts. You can see at the top here that we have our character options up here. So we've got our font selection, we've got our styles and our sizing. So whenever you're working in Illustrator, that's the quick way to select them is, is up here on the top. But you can also use this window and have it on the side, which I like to keep it on the side here, keep it neat. So what we're gonna do now is select a new font. So what you wanna do is select your typography here. And I'm gonna click the drop down menu and you'll see you get all these fonts. And it's awesome because you can actually filter out fonts. So what we can do now, you see the top bar, I got a filter here. If I click that, I can select serif, slab serif, sans serif, script, black letter, handwritten or decorative. And this is really helpful if I wanna select see only certain fonts, maybe I'm working on a certain project and I only wanna see a few. So if I go serif, you can see all my serif fonts here and it gives you a nice little sample or preview on the side, which is nice. So you can see that. And if I left click on one of them, it's gonna choose that font and you can see the font here. Our next option as well is you can see that this is called character styles. So if I click that drop down menu, you can see this font only has one style. A lot of free fonts don't have a lot of styles. So you wanna actually purchase fonts that have many styles. It's gonna help you your work be better and be cohesive. It allows you to you know, do some matchups and add-ons and have, you know, a lot of consistent typography with headlines and, and body copy. And it's really gonna, you know, make it look nice and neat and really gonna work well with each other. So we wanna select another font that has more styles. So you can see, I can change my filter. Maybe I wanna go to a sans serif and we'll go to another font that has a lot of styles. So. I know Monster Rat has a lot of styles, so if I click Monster Rat there, you can see if I click the styles, 
It's got extra light, thin, light, regular, medium, semi-bold, bold, extra bold, and black. So you can see it has a lot of styles. So I can play around. You know, maybe I want to do for the body, I'll add that just for a quick example. So maybe I'll make that light. I'll make the sizing smaller. And I'll just fill it with placeholder text for now. Make sure the letting's up. Change the tracking. So you can see that. So you can see just by having many styles, you can get cohesive typography that works well with each other, that complements each other. So that's another good reason that you want a font with many styles. So that's that. You can also um, turn off the filter by going to filter and then clicking all classes. You can also filter out typekit fonts. So if you have fonts on typekit, you see I've got a few fonts here. If you're with Creative Cloud, then you can go online and add those. You can also star your favorite fonts. So if I click off the star, maybe I want to favorite a few. If I click the star, it's going to show all the favorite fonts that you have there which is pretty handy. And then you've got this option here, which is, I don't know what it is, but I just left it. So what we can do now is we can actually scale the font. So this option, the first one here, in the first box is to scale or the size. So you can see that size 100 points, PT means points. I'm just holding shift and clicking, dropping it down to 30 points there. You can also scale the font by holding the corner and dragging that as well. So I can scale that down like that, or you can do it from the button here. Doesn't matter. The second option is the letting. Letting is the space between lines. So you can see here, if I press enter and start typing here, and if I just select this whole box and adjust the letting, you can see it increases the space between this line and this line. And you can see, you see your baseline here, baseline there, pretty much it's the space between those. So you can see that if I make it less, it's gonna be very tight. If I make it more, it's gonna be more space, give more white space, it's better on the eye. So I'm just gonna delete this, zoom in a bit more. So I've got this letter. So this option here is the kerning. Now kerning is a space between two letters or each significant letter. So if I click here, I can hold Option or Alt and press the left arrow key or right arrow key, and it's gonna adjust my kerning. You can see now my kerning is 160, and it's add more space between the A and the P. So you can see if I select all three of these letters and then do it again, it's gonna adjust these two letters to the A, as you can see there. So that's what I'm doing there. And I can adjust this back like this and have custom, and you can customize any letter you want which is awesome. If you want to reset it, you can just go select zero or click the auto button, as you can see there. But you can see there, the spacing is still not the same. So you have to go back to each spot and make it zero and type it in the bar, as you can see there. So that should be right. The next option is called tracking. Now tracking is the space between all the letters of the word. So you can see there I selected it all and then did Alt again and you can see that's what it does. You can select it all by pressing just the normal selection tool, select it and bump up the track, the tracking like that. And you can see there it's increasing the space between each letter. So it's very important when working with typography. You can also scale the, the type vertically and horizontally. So you can see that I can just do it vertically and I can also do it horizontally. The bad thing about this is that if it's not even, it's gonna distort the type. As you can see, it stretches it and that's ugly and it's not a good practice to do that. So what I like to do is just keep that 100% and I'll scale it with the sizing or I'll just scale it from here and hold shift, as you can see that. So it keeps the proportions so you know it's not actually stretching. You can also, we can also edit the baseline or it's called baseline shift. So you can see how we have our baseline here. I can add the baseline for specific letters. So this has 10 points up, 20 points up. So you can see now if I zoom in and select it, you see the baseline there is, is actually moved up. So it's not the same as this anymore. 
So that's what the baseline shift does. So if you want to have custom typography, I can go minus as well and it's going to bring it down like that. I can select multiple letters and do it. So maybe you're working on like a specific poster or something and you want to have it like trippy, out of place, then you can do that. That's called baseline shift. Super helpful. So we've got that. We also have the rotate tool here as well. So you can rotate it. Each the letters like this, it rotates it on an angle. So if you go all the way around 360, you can see what it's doing there. Go back to zero. That's pretty handy. So after we've done these parameters, we've got all these buttons on the bottom. Now these are pretty handy as well. So if I click this, this is going to be all caps. The second one is going to be small caps. So you can see there's a difference. So this one's all caps and then I click the second button is small caps. So you got to be careful when you're working with typography or even in InDesign, it has the same options as well that Illustrator will read it as these buttons turned on. So sometimes it's, if you're making a change and um, you know, small caps is on and you're trying to make it like lowercase or something, then that's your problem. You have to turn the button off. So that's all, you got all caps, small caps, delete this one. You've got subscript and you've got load script there. So if I got a uh, number there, select it. You can see that it's going to do subscript, second one, and then that's the other option. And then you can go here and you can change it like this on the location where you want it. So that's those options. Like if you're working with, with um, degrees or, um, or yeah, if you're working with like degrees or something like that and you want to put a subscript number up there or like a date with the TH there, then that's what you'd use that for. You've also got underline and you got strike through. So, you know, if you want to have like a word like that, then you can have like the strike through there. And once you get better at it, start to play with it. <laughs> so you can see there, that's pretty cool. You see a lot of posters with that effect, which is nice. And then you can see down the bottom here, if this option's highlighted, this is just um, anti-analyzing. So you can see you just want to leave it on sharp. And then you've got some languages here that you can change with it that. And pretty much that's it. That's how you use the type tool. Hope this was helpful. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button because I post tutorials, you know, every week. And leave a comment below if you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what other tutorials you want to see. And hope to see you in the next one.